Hello, this is Tom Walski from Bentley Systems, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up uh, unidirectional flushing events. Now, unidirectional flushing uh, differs from conventional flushing in that it involves closing valves and opening possibly multiple hydrants in order to get very high velocities in the system. This also controls the directional flow much better than conventional flushing, where you just open up hydrants and hope that you get the right flow in the right direction. With unidirectional flushing, you have much more control. However, when you're working with unidirectional flushing, you need to have better information about the system. It's a little more work to set up. For example, you need to identify exactly which pipes have isolation valves and what's the exact location of a hydrant. You can't get into an intersection, for example, where the hydrant is on one side of the isolation valve. And with conventional flushing, where you're not caring about closing valves, it doesn't matter if you're modeling the flow at this hydrant or this valve. You get basically the same flush. But when you close this valve, as you will, in unidirectional flushing, it makes all the difference in the world as to whether the hydrant is on one side of the valve or the other. So it's important to have a very good model with the uh, hydrants and the valves identified in order to do a good job with unidirectional flushing. Now to start unidirectional flushing, what you want to do is go to Analysis Flushing. And you'll see that you have the ability here to pick a new study area. So we're going to pick a new area. We'll just let it be Area 1. And we have to identify which scenario is going to serve as a starting point. We'll call it Base. Now we'll identify what velocity we want to hit. Let's say we want to hit a velocity of 4 feet per second. And we can also specify that in shear stress units. Safety factor refers to how much longer do you want to flush beyond what the minimum is to flush that run of pipe. We deal with pipe runs as the, the unit of pipes that we're going to flush in a given event. So let's say we want to go about one and a half times the minimum it will take to flush out that pipe run, just to make sure we get the pipe good and clean. Now our pipe set in this particular case uh, is uh, identified as the pipes that you want to consider for this study. In our case, we want to pretty much get everything, so we'll just say select by polygon, and we'll just draw the limits of the particular study that we're in. Uh, in other, most case, if you're working within a small portion of a large study, you're going to want to selectively work on one area. In this particular case, you see we have uh, 33 pipes particular in this area. Uh, we can also pick which nodes we're interested in seeing selected. We're not going to worry about that now. Or if we have boundary valves, which are valves that are going to be shut at the beginning of a given study area and closed while you're, you're working on that area. So this might be a neighborhood where you want to close off the back door feeds. Now for the uh, flows we're going to get, let's set the emitter coefficient to model the flows. So we'll set that to 200 as the emitter coefficient. And now we've, we've basically identified the, the properties of each event. Now you can get in there and do a, a much uh, individual event by event uh, overriding of these values. But right now we're going to just accept this on an area basis. So now what we can do is set up our events. So we go to uni new unidirectional event. And we're going to want to do several things here. This is the key uh, selection screen. So this first screen is add to pipe run. And that's what we want to do is identify the pipe run we're going to start with. So following our rule of always flushing with clean water behind us, we're going to start at the reservoir and identify the pipes that, as you move outward from the reservoir. So I'll pick that pipe, that pipe, this pipe. And that's the hydrant that we're going to flush right here. So that's going to be the end of our particular pipe run. Now we're going to have to do some closing of valves to make this work. Let's zoom into this neighborhood here. So just zoom in. And we see that if we don't if we leave this valve open, it's okay because it's a dead end. But if we leave this valve open, water's going to come around the back end and our velocity will be lower. So we're going to want to pick this particular valve as a valve to close. Notice we're on the second uh, point here. Okay, that's the valve we want to close. And the hydrant we want to open is this. So this is the what are called the operating uh, elements during this particular flush. So in order to make this flush go, we're going to flow this hydrant and close this valve beyond it. Okay, so now we can uh, go back and look at this particular event and see if this is uh, what we want. And it looks like what we want. So we'll go back to the, we'll say select, and we've defined an event. Now here's where you would go in uh, doing this and put in notes identifying where this is. This, I believe, is the corner of Maple and Apple Street. So we would type in notes so that when you pass this off to an operator, they'll see what's uh, happening. 
and in, in terms that they'll understand rather than just P1 or H2, the operators may not understand that sort of thing. We can also do highlighting to see what we've selected. So it'll show what we've selected. A uh, float event, a float hydrant will look like this large hydrant symbol. Isolation valves closed will show this way, and the pipe run will show in orange. Okay, so with that, we can actually just run this one particular event. Usually you'll run more than one, but in this case, we'll just run the one to show what it looks like. Now, once we've done a run, we can turn off that highlighting and turn on highlighting with result, regard to results. And what this will show us is which pipes were we successful at, at flushing. And we see that the pipes we were successful at flushing so far are the pipes in the pipe run that we selected. That's very good. So we have a, a good uh, particular uh, flush, so we want to move on now and move into our next event. So what we're going to do is continue down Maple Road here, down to the end of Maple Road. So that's going to involve uh, opening up this uh, vibe valve that was closed, closing off some side feeds here, and flowing a hydrant way down at the end. So let's uh, get ready to set up that particular event. So we'll go back to the area node here, and we'll pick new unidirectional event. So as I said, this new event now, we're going to start where we left off at the last one and zoom in here. And we're going to want to work with this particular uh, set of elements. So we're going to pick the pipe run, first of all, consisting of this pipe. We'll zoom in here, get this pipe, this pipe. And that's our the run that we're going to try to clean. Now we're going to go in here and pick, figure out which elements we have to operate. But one of the things we're going to need to operate, of course, is the hydrant that we're flowing down here. And then we've got to watch out for these uh, backdoor feeds. We don't want water coming in from the side, so we'll pick that valve to close, this valve to close, and this valve to close. So now we can check this and say, okay, we've identified this. Okay, so we see which valves we've closed, and we see here we automatically got reopened. So this was the valve that we closed for the previous event, and what the water gems will assume is that you're going to open the ones that you had closed for the previous event, so we'll reopen that one. So that gives us the particulars of the event we're doing. We'll look at it again using the highlighting. We see what we're highlighting is the valves we have to open, the valves we have to close, and the hydrant we have to oper operate. So we're all ready to run this, but we might as well run both of them together. These run pretty quickly. So we'll go back to the area level, and we'll run both of these together to make sure that together they've accomplished what we wanted to set out to do. Okay, so from here now, we can go and turn off this highlighting and turn on the highlighting based on results and zoom out. And we see that we've gotten good flush here, but we didn't get quite enough flush here. We didn't get quite enough velocity during this particular flush, and we'll have to go and investigate. Maybe we had a, you know, just too much flow coming in from the side or something, or we just didn't quite get enough velocity in this event. So we can get in and... and uh, view that event uh, using the Flushing Event Browser, Flushing Results Browser. And we see that Event 2 is a unidirectional flushing, and we can now, by picking that event in the Flushing Results Browser, we can go in and see what exactly was the velocity of these pipes. So the velocity in these pipes, these were 12-inch pipes, so it's going to be hard to get a good velocity. So we wanted to get 3, and we only got up to 2.55. Now, on this dead-end part, we did get, we only had a 6-inch pipe out here, and we easily got uh, eight, 9 feet per second. So because we have four times the diameter in this pipe, we didn't quite get enough velocity. We just fell short slightly, so we could try, uh, you know, opening up two hydrants, or maybe we're just going to say, well, we're satisfied with the 12-inch pipe that we're only going to get two and a half feet per second. So that shows us how we can lay out these events and also just showed us how we were able to identify using the Flushing Results Browser which pipes got closed and why. What were the details of it? Using the Flushing Results Browser, we can uh, visualize uh, what's happening within each event and what the velocities are in individual pipes. If you don't have, if you don't pick the Results Browser, again, let's go to the Flushing Results Browser. If you, and that's located next to the com compute screen, if we don't pick this and uh, just go back here, we can go back to the steady state results, which were the, the baseline from which we started the flushing. But in general, we get some good information here. How much of the pipe was, has totally been flushed? How much was flushed in this particular event that wasn't flushed earlier? 
It'll show us also how long we need to flush in terms of time, about 4.2 minutes. But it shows us with that safety factor, we ought to flush for 6.3 minutes. It shows us what the flow rate is and the, uh, the volume of water we're going to use. And this shows us what the hydrant discharge was. So using that hydrant on a six inch pipe, we were only able to get about 900 GPM, which is why we couldn't get really a great flush in a 12 inch pipe with only flushing that, that, at that rate. So that shows you the kind of things you can do with the uh, it's setting up a unidirectional flushing event, which is what we do. We set up two unidirectional flushing events, and then from that we're able to um, identify which pipes got flushed well, which ones weren't flushed quite as well, but we did get somewhat of a good flush from it. Okay, so that that's the. Uh, the basics of this. We also have some ability here under options to change, the, uh, set the way we sew colors in the drawings. So by, by changing this, uh, we can get different colors for different events, such as which elements are operated, which things are closed, which pipes make up the pipe run. We can also get symbol size multipliers changed in language as well. So we have a lot of controls of the display that you get as you're running through the flushing events. So that shows us how we can set up a unidirectional flushing events and what they look like in the model as you're going through it. Thank you.